National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 has been launched and presented to the public. It replaces the Economic Recovery and Growth 2017 to 2020, which assisted Nigeria to end recession in 2017 and sustained modest growth in the economy until the global financial meltdown occasioned by COVID-19. President Mohamed Buhari performed the ceremony before the meeting of the Federal Council. The new National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 brings together all economic initiatives of the Buhari. 36 states and FCT are very, very happy and we, have, we appreciate both the president and the vice president because under them states have been given the pride of place. Speakers at the inauguration of the new National Development Plan. And still coming from Abuja, the Senate has passed 2022 budget of 17.13 trillion naira, an increment from the 16.3 trillion naira presented by the executive. This followed consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, which explained that the National Assembly increased the oil price benchmark from $57 to $62 to reflect the current market value in the international market. The budget is also based on oil production of 1.88 million barrels per day, exchange rate of 410 naira to a dollar and gross domestic products of 42% and inflation rate of 13%. Estimate and could not be covered by the increase in revenue. These are great achievements that this Senate promised to Nigerians that will do them because they are fundamental and strong pillars of our legislative agenda. Today, by the grace of God, we have passed the budget for 2022. And that is a huge, very big milestone, very historic. And this is something that we are supposed to ensure that as long as we are in this Senate, after our tenure, that we pass the budget as regularly as we have established. It also approved President Muhammadu Buhari's request for rearrangement of 276.7 billion naira for the funding of critical structures in the 2021 budget. Back home now, Ogun State Minister of Agriculture has set machineries in motion to consolidate on its achievement in the promotion of selected key value chains such as rice, cassava, poultry, and fish, among others, while it anticipates support to farms and firms from World Bank intervention in the next fiscal year. Hence, the ministry has proposed a budget estimate of 3.78 billion naira as its total expenditure for 2022. The state commissioner in charge of the ministry, Dr. Adiola Odetino, stated this while appearing before members of the State House of Assemblies Committee on Finance and Appropriation, chaired by Honorable Olakunle Shopukola, to defend his 2022 estimate of the ministry at the Assemblies Complex, Ukemoso Abiyukuta. Correspondent Kola Wolio Shokova, the exercise. Details of the report are presented in this package. We'll bring you details of the report later in the course of the news. The public-private partnership policy of Governor Dako Abiodun led administration has again has gained more momentum as private oil and gas company Petrolex is set to begin operations in Ogun State in the next five weeks. Fielding questions from newsmen shortly after a meeting with Governor Abiodo, the chairman and chief executive officer of the company, Mr. Shegu Adebutu, said the project would expand the economy base of the state. He disclosed that no fewer than 300 people have already been employed, while over 1,000 others will be engaged when the company begins full operation. Uh, we came to talk about my project in Ibefo, the oil and gas project. And it's a um, long journey and its final combination into being active in the next few weeks. Well, the one that affects me is the one that leads to my facility. And in the last three months, it has been fixed to a, a reasonable extent.
Mr. Adebutu, who was impressed with the development going on in the state, particularly appreciated the present administration for giving attention to road infrastructures, noting that it is one of the basic infrastructure needed to drive investment in any society. Uh, it's like um, really good talking to him. He does have an oil and gas background, so it's easy to explain certain things to him. He also stressed that if the developmental approach continue, August State will be in a better position before the end of the governor's tenure. The Augusta governor, Prince Tapo Abiodo, has appointed four principals of secondary schools as principals general for the four zones in the state, appointed a Shobulo Olaniyi Okonlawo for Eja Zone, Adeyemi Olaiso Abike for Ijobu Zone, Urubi Sunde Akombi for Yewa Zone, and Udukaya Ulushegun Wojuni for Lemo Zone. In a statement by his chief press secretary, Kunle Shumori, Governor Abiodo said the step became necessary following the retirement of all the principal's general sworn in in September 2020, while stating that the newly appointed principal's general were chosen on merit and seniority. The governor enjoined them to see the appointment as a call to higher service. Augusta government is set to provide free internet access in all special institutions in the state in the drive towards improving the quality of education through the use of information technology. Ugo State Governor Prince Dapo Abiodo revealed this at the second convocation ceremony and confirmation of Honorary Fellowship Award of Ugo State College of Health Technology, Elise Ijebo, the best graduate student of each session from 2014 to 2021, were given automatic employment in the state public service. Murphy Shomi completes the report. Ogo State College of Health Technology, Ilese Ijebu, has over the years produced skilled manpower to provide the building block of the development of healthcare services, and the institution is yet releasing another set of graduates to further strengthen healthcare delivery services in the state. Ogo State Governor, represented by the Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Abayomi Aribabu, said the government was elated that the institution has continued to fulfill the purpose of its establishment. I'm happy to see our students continue to put up best performances in major academic and entrepreneurship skills. We have been keeping the flag flying in our endeavor to seek more purposeful and glorious phase of development. The guest lecturer, Professor Ahmed Jani Mora, in his lecture titled Driving Primary Health Care for Quality Service Delivery in the Precarious Times, declared that for primary health care, to be well suited within the healthcare system, it must reflect and evolve from the economic conditions, social cultural characteristics, address the main health problems in the community. Provost of Ugun State College of Health Technology, Ilese Ijebu, Dr. Abiyobi Oladinde, in his convocation address, said the institution has witnessed massive transformation in infrastructure over the years and has been doing a lot in grooming technical manpower in appreciable quality, adequate to meet market demands. Most of our programs go through dual accreditation processes, streamlining our program to focus on our core values and objectives. There were guru messages from the chairman of the Jebu Northeast local government, Honorable Folusha Badejo, and others. We have so many of them who are in our environmental uh, session in the local government. Major General Seyidu Ayodele Balogun and Otumba Kunle Kalejaye were given honorary fellowship awards. Secretary to the Ogun State Government, Mr. Tokumbo Talabi, bagged honorary fellowship award of the school on educational upliftment. I have a part in this now. <laughs> So the SSD, he believes in the educational upliftment and uh, due to his um, service to humanity. The best graduating students starting from 2014-2015 session were presented Matthew Shomi, OGTV News. August State Government through its Ministry of Works and Infrastructure has disclosed that it has plans to spend the sum of 62. 438 billion naira for its various capital projects, out of which 
257 billion naira was meant for reconstruction of agro cargo airport, inter and intercity, rural and industrial area roads, as well as bridges across the state. The State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, Engineer Ade Akisoya, made this known while taking time to defend the ministry's 2022 budget proposal before the state lawmakers at the assembly's complex, Ukemoso Abeokuta. Correspondent Kola Wolio covered the exercise and its report is presented in this package. 2022 budget defense exercise conducted on MDAs in Ogo State by the State House of Assembly continued with the Minister of Works and Infrastructure, led by the Commissioner in the Ministry, Engineer Adi Akisoya. Akisoya said the objective of the budget was to initiate new road projects in addition to the timely completion of all ongoing roads across the state, as well as river crossing and overhead bridges. He stressed that the next year budget would cater for the rehabilitation, reconstruction of 42.5 kilometer township road, reconstruction of 60 kilometer rural and 15 kilometer industrial roads, while another 60 kilometer of chemical treated roads were constructed alongside 50 kilometer inter intra cities roads, amongst others. In a related development, the general manager, State Public Works Agency, Engineer Benga Kintola, has affirmed that the agency was irrevocably committed to sustainable road maintenance and management to heed the state industrialization policy. To achieve all this, Akitola disclosed that the agency had proposed a sum of 853.9 million naira as its total budget for the next fiscal year. This consisted of 750 million naira for capital projects, while 103 million naira would go for a current expenditure. He explained further that sectional rehabilitation of roads across the state would go up 750 million naira in the next fiscal year. The lawmakers during the exercise also considered the budget of the State Minister of Rural Development, Bureau of Electrical Engineering Services, and State Water Corporation, amongst others. And still ahead in the news, federal government destroys over 1 million doses of expired AstraZeneca vaccines donated for COVID-19. We'll bring you the details after this time out. Don't go away. watching OGTV May News. The news continues. The federal government has destroyed over 1 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines donated to the country to combat COVID-19. The destruction carried out on Wednesday in Abuja, according to the government, followed the expiration of the vaccines given to the country by foreign donors. The National Primary Health Care Development Agency handed the vaccines to the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, which in turn presented them to the Abuja Environmental Protection Agency to destroy. The destruction was supervised by the Executive Director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Fraser Schweib, and the Director General of NAVDAC, Professor Mujisola Adeyeye. Speaking shortly before the destruction was carried out, NPHCDA's Executive Director, Dr. Fraser Schweib, explained that the action was carried out on behalf of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, comprising the Federal Ministry of Health, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, and the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration, Aid Control, NAVDAC. 
while Fofo State Governor Mrs. Bamidele Abiodo has harped on the need for Nigerians to show care, love, as well as extend goodwill to special children beyond the Yuletide. She disclosed this during the 2021 Children Christmas Party, adding that the state government is committed to providing facilities for children, especially children, as a result of the peculiarity. Our reporter Adibola Oshomoji covered the event held at the Valley View Auditorium. She now reports. In the spirit of the Christmas celebration, wife of Ogun State's governor, Mrs. Bami Delia Biodo, played host to children from across the 20 local government areas of the state at Government House Valley View Auditorium at Beokuta. Mrs. Abiodo, in her remarks, explained that Christmas is about giving and showing love, especially to the less privileged members of the society. Let the love of Jesus remain in your hearts and let it show in your behavior to your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, and everybody that is around you. Be obedient to your parents, to your teachers, be respectful to your elders, say no to violence, and say no to bullying. She urged children not to throw the cautions of COVID-19 to the wind as the world is still battling with the virus. We must remember, you must always put on your mask, wash your hands, social distance. You must always, always make sure that you cover your mouth and your nose when you're in the company of a lot of people. The event witnessed presentation of school bags by the wife of the governor to the children who expressed their feelings. I want to thank her for everything that she has done for us. Please, I want to thank her for everything she has done for us. We have books and books and milk, milk and all that available as shops. I am so excited. Today is a good day for me. Thank you, Mrs. Sabiodo. I appreciate her so much. I love I love what she did. Mrs. Bam Dele I appreciate you for organizing this event. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. The 2021 Children Christmas Party witnessed dancing competition, comedy, games and cutting of the Christmas cake. <laughs> Adebola Oshomoji, OGTV News. The Speaker of the Ogun State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Lapule Olomo, has charged workers in the state's legislative arm to rededicate themselves to quality service delivery by opposing the effects of public service in all their official conducts. Olomo made the calls at the Assembly's Christmas carol and service of night lessons held at the Assembly's complex, Ukimoso Abeokuta. Kola Walio Show's report is presented in this package. Management staff and lawmakers in Ogun State, led by Speaker Right Honorable Lakunle Uluomo, converged on the assembly premises to give thanks and adoration to God in a Christmas carol service of nine lessons. <laughs> Speaker Olakunle Luomo in his message attributed the success of the ninth legislature to the sustainability of the existing mutual interdependence among the three arms of government with strategic contribution and support of the workforce. He encouraged them to continue to exhibit high level of competence, discipline, orderliness, and shown act inimical to the progress of the institution. Appreciating them for their support in the outgoing year, Oluomo challenged them to redouble their efforts to enable the ninth legislative session achieve and surpass its target of enacting people-oriented legislation for the progress of the state. So let us get to a state where we will make discipline more important even than the job itself. And what that means is you are trying to work as a government officer, you have your advantages to stay here if you are to that, but then and let us work together as one team, no by caring. And some of you that work in specific positions, don't forget that you sign photos of citizens. In his sermon, the officiating minister, Pastor Adetayo Ogunshilu, urged the congregation to submit themselves to the control of God, stressing that the supreme being 
reigns over all affairs of men. If the only begotten Son of God he is our Lord Jesus Christ, that is Emmanuel. He is the Savior of the world, that is Emmanuel. He is the bread of life, the only acceptable one that will lead people to eternal life is Jesus Christ. The clergy, however, commended the speaker and other lawmakers for entrenching good governance through legislative activities. Bible passages at the carol service were read by Honorables Isaac Adams, Ola Kunle Shobukonla, Juliana Akintayo, and the majority leader, Yusuf Sharif. Others were Honorable Solomon Osho, Sylvester Abiodun, Adegu Kiyadinyoju, Adijat Adeleye Oladapo, while the speaker, Ola Kunle Ulomo, read the night lesson. Prayers were later offered for the assembly, the state, and the nation at large. There is need for Christians to surrender all to God to reciprocate his gift to Jesus Christ to the world. Pastor Michael Adura Dola made the call in his sermon at this year's night lessons and carols on the neuropsychiatric hospital Aru Abukuta. Elizabeth Eso attended the program held at the ultra modern cafeteria of the hospital. A report. <laughs> Nine lessons and carols was organized by the management and staff of the Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Arua Belkuta, to celebrate the birth of Christ and also to appreciate God for working with them all through the year. The dramatized nine lessons were read by some of the dignitaries who graced the occasion, and some management staff led by the provost and chief medical director of the hospital, Dr. Paul Agbola. <laughs> In a sermon titled, It Came to Rain, which anchored on the book of Luke chapter 22, beginning from verse 1, Pastor Michael Adradola urged everyone to always live their lives for God and depend solely on him for successful living. You are lying to it. It will empower you to love. To love. That is that's all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not fail, but have everlasting life. Special carols, rendition, and congregational Christmas hymns characterize the ceremony. <laughs> The 2021 Neuropsychiatric Hospital Arua Belkuta Nine Lessons and Carols has as its theme Jesus Reigns, and it was taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 33. Elizabeth Esson, OG TV News. Every Christmas season traditionally comes with carol songs, gifts, church services, and special foods, but decoration with lights and designs are a special feature of the season. This is what Abdelkuta is witnessing now. The city has been painted with Christmas features. Bumi Adigo was in town and came back with us. Moving around Abdelkuta, the Ogo state capital, now one could notice some people walking in some major areas who are fixing street lights, Christmas decorations, and lights to depict the moon. But one cannot see the beauty during the day, but from evening into the night, the color and faintly Christmas songs whose from every part of the state capital.
from the newly reconstructed Abel Kuta Shimu Shagamu Interchange Road. The street light poles have been adorned with different styles of the Christmas lights. The governor's office entrance at Okemoso, an NPC flyover, and a stopover at the June 12 Cultural Center in Kuto, Abel Kuta. Well, you are wondering where I am by this time of the day. Well, don't be surprised, and I won't allow you to guess much. This is the June 12 Cultural Center here in Abelkuta. And it is the festive moment, the festive mood, the festive period. Christmas is in town, so what do you expect? This is a beautiful sight to behold. Coming out of the Cultural Center, one is faced by the best sight of beautiful decorations. Some artists walking on legs of the flyover as they decorated them with creative drawings. We want to create an avenue for our younger ones that don't know about all these icons. And they see that they, they, they have a view of what they look like and what they have done in time past. Where people can just come here, they see one or two things and they can refer to history. That is our motive. You don't need to be told that Christmas is around the corner and the people are already in the mood. Residents say many thanks to the Governor Dakwabiodun led administration for painting the city in Christmas colors. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. And still on the youth side, the federal government has declared Monday 27th, Tuesday 28th, December 2021 and Monday 3rd January 2022 as public holidays to mark Christmas, Boxing Day and the New Year's Day celebrations. The declaration was contained in a statement issued on Wednesday in Abuja by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Interior, Dr. Shua Bagore, Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Rauf Aregbe Shola, who made a declaration on behalf of the federal government, felicitated Christians and all Nigerians at home and the diaspora on this year's Christmas and New Year celebrations. Arigbe Shola enjoined Christians to practice the doctrine of Christ, which includes but not limited to faith, hope, and love. He emphasized that peace and security are two critical conditions for economic development and prosperity, urging Christians and Nigerians to make the best use of this festive period to pray for the total eradication of insecurity bedeviling the nation. Arek Beshola also charged Nigerians not to be lured into a false sense of security on COVID-19 pandemic, but to note that it is increasingly assuming a very dangerous and harmful dimension with the emergence of the Omicron variant. He urged everyone to observe all the stipulated non-pharmaceutical protocols and guidelines, such as wearing of face masks, frequent washing of hands with soap and water, using of hand sanitizers, and avoidance of large groups. To ease traveling during the Christmas and New Year celebrations, the Federal Road Safety Car says it has mobilized over 30,000 personnel for its special patrol tagged Operation Zero Tolerance for Road Traffic Crashes. The car also said it would equally deploy body cameras and ambulances in 46 points in Lagos, Makadi, Nostagawa, Sakoto, and other parts of the country as part of initiatives to ensure safe highways during the Yuletide. Disclosing this in Abuja, the core education officer, B.C. Kazim, listed the routes to be covered to include Akanga, Lafayette, Makodi, Jos Bauchi, Gumbe, Sakoto, Tamboa, Jega, Brinikedi, Kastina, Kano, Wudil, Dusi, Azare, Potiskam, Kaduino, Samin, Naka, Jos, Abuja, Kaduino, Kano, and Okene, Ogori, Iswaowu. Others are Makodi, Otupo, Obolo. Asaba Abraka Ugeli Wari, Ibadon Ugeri Shagamu, and Shagamu Mowe, Nagos, among others. Kazim stated that patrol vehicles, advanced life support ambulances, heavy duty tow trucks, medium and light duty tow trucks, patrol motorbikes, extricating machines, reflecting jackets, traffic cones, patrol lights, and radar guns will also be deployed in addition to breathalyzers, cameras, tablets equalizers and other technical equipment. Meanwhile, governors of the Southwest region have ordered the Western Nigeria Security Network, also known as Amoteku Corps, to begin 24-hour inter-border patrol in Undo, Oshun, 
Ogun and Ikiti states to ensure adequate security of lives and property of the people, especially travelers, during and after the Christmas period. Not less than 90 widows have benefited from the empowerment program of Otumba Olausi of Imuru Ijebo, Otumba Adebayo Odunawo, in line with the spirit of the season, Christmas, which is given. The event had in attendance dignitaries, including the Deputy Speaker of the Ogo State House of Assembly, Right Honorary Abdullatif Balugu, members and leaders of the All Progressive Congress, Margaret Okonola, as to details. The state of widowhood in Nigeria is considerably a common concern in the society. In line with the spirit of the season, Christmas, the Otumba Olausi of Imori Jebu, Otumba Adebayo Odunowo, embarked on an empowerment program aimed at triggering acceptance and restoring hope among widows in Odogboli local government area of the state. The Deputy Speaker, Ogun State House of Assembly, Honorable Akim Balogun and other dignitaries present lauded the initiative. This is a period where you make people happy, where you give to the less privileged. And that is what Tomba is doing today. It is Christmas season, which we exchange gifts, and that is why we thought of supporting one of our own. I feel highly enlightened that today people have been empowered in the Bolo local government and also that we are rounding up the year and praying together that it is going to be a fruitful year come 2020 to 2022. God bless who gives out and more blessing will be for whoever does this time. Beneficiaries in the same vein were appreciative, saying it's a notable gesture worthy of emulation. The Otumba Olausi of Imori Jebu, Otumba Adebayo Odunowo said the initiative was born out of the passion to provide succor to traumatic experiences by widows. They go to hell. Not, not just psychological trauma that is that they suffer from the physical separation of their husband, but the neglect from family members and the society. So I think that people like us must step in to help the widows from time to time. So that's what motivates me. The event also witnessed the handing over of representations of the All Progressives Congress, flag and broom from the party chairman, Udo Boluluku government, Honorable Muiwa Ido, to the newly accepted member, Otumba Adebayo Udunowo, Margaret Okunola, OGTV News. And still on empowerment, no fewer than 5,000 constituents have benefited from the empowerment program of Honorable Kemi Ujuwole, member of the Ogun State House of Assembly, representing Ijebu, the state constituency. The empowerment and appreciation meeting was held at the auditorium of the Millennium Hall Ituro Ijebu, the Binga Atikoya's report is presented in this package. <laughs> a town hall or appreciation meeting, you may not be far from it. But for Honorable Kemi Oduwale, member of the Ogun State House of Assembly representing Ijebu, the state constituency, it is a time to give account of stewardship having represented them for more than two years. Local government chairman, party chairman, and some leaders in Ijebu, the local government area, described the reign of Honorable Kemi Oduwale as a peaceful one that has brought a whole lot of developments to Ijebu land. Because we see his activity in the house, and uh, occasionally to uh, call on the elders and brief us, but to the generality of their people now, he, he does it like this as he's doing. High point of the event was the distribution of gift items to some constituents who have come to rub minds with their representatives. We thank you very much for providing that generator to us. So it shows us that he is a good representative. So we don't even expect that we collect such a things today. But we thank him very much. For Honorable Kemi Oduwale, more goodies are in the kitty for the good people of Ijebu Ode and its environs from Prince Jakbo, a building-led administration. Even before the end of this year, I want to even go to the nooks and crannies. The, in collaboration with the local government chairman, I'm going to make sure about 10 roads are graded this December so that it will ease the movement of our people into the interland. 
and I will continue to serve my people. Coming into politics is for service. Special presentation and appreciation to Honorable Dukoya for his unrelenting support added glamour to the event. The Senate on Wednesday failed to overwrite the President's veto on the 2010 Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021. The Red Chamber made the U-turn when members emerged from a 40-minute closed session. The President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, explained after the executive session that the upper chamber had decided to consult with members of the House of Representatives on the matter. He said since the House had gone on recess and the Constitution prescribed that both chambers should take a joint decision on the matter, it would be proper for them to wait to January before any action could be taken. Lawan also said the Senate, in the closed session, agreed that members should consult with their constituencies who are critical stakeholders in the electoral process. Up next is business news. Welcome to the business segment of the news. Following Twitter ban order by the federal government, Nigeria's economy has lost 499.32 billion naira. So the shuts down June 4, 2021. The suspension of Twitter came after the social media platform deleted a tweet by the president, Muhammadu Buhari. Telecommunication companies had on June 5 blocked access to Twitter after receiving a directive from the Nigerian Communications Commission to that effect. According to the NetBlock's cost of shutdown tool, Nigeria's economy loses 104.02 million naira every hour to the ban. It has been 4,800 hours, 200 days since the social networking site was blocked. While giving his Independence Day speech, Buhari hinted that the ban would continue until Twitter registered in Nigeria had a physical presence and presentation. Recently, the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Festus Kiyamo, said Twitter had agreed to the nation's conditions for the suspension to be lifted. Kiyamo, who is also a member of the committee set up to engage Twitter over its suspension, said the reason why the president took that step is to recalibrate our relationship with Twitter and not to drive them away from our country. Amid a surge in demand for more cash by bank customers as the yield season approaches, some deposit money banks have slashed the withdrawal limit to their customers. Findings across bank branches in some key cities in the country revealed that many customers could not withdraw the total amount they needed over the counter due to lack of adequate amount of cash on the part of the banks. Some bank customers who spoke to our correspondent said bank officials simply reduced the amount their customers wanted to withdraw and asked them to use alternative channels to carry out their outstanding transactions. Furthermore, it was learned that most of the banks did not load all their ATMs, a situation that worsened the flight of the customers. The development, it was learned, affected several operators of point-of-sale business who could not withdraw enough cash from the banks and the ATMs to run their businesses properly. The federal government has stressed the role of citizens in exploring innovative ways of growing the economy for the good of all. Minister of State Budget and National Planning, Prince Clem Agra. A keynote at TEPNEXT conference in Lekki, Lagos with the theme, Reimagining Crypto as the Future of Finance, said the event captured the mutual desire of the federal government and its citizens to explore innovative methods towards economic recovery, growth, and development. According to the minister, the government remained enthusiastic about the numerous possibilities the crypto industry provides despite the seemingly growing restrictions, while noting that cryptocurrencies could be biggest disruptor in finance and governance the world has ever witnessed. He added that government needed to regulate the industry. 
the market capitalization of Bitcoin, the world's most popular cryptocurrency, fell by $264.28 billion in 50 days. The market cap of BTC rose by $250.36 billion in October to close at $1.16 trillion. BTC rose to a high of $67,566.83 on November 8, but dropped to $56,942.14 on November 18 and continued to trade around the $50,000 mark for the best for the rest of the month. BTC closed trading at $57,005. $0.43 in November, with a market cap of $1.08 trillion. It fell below $50,000 on December 4. BTC later rebounded towards the $50,000 mark, but the on-trend was short-lived as it has traded below the $50,000 since December 13. It closed at $46,880.28 with a capital cap of $886.33 in on December 19. In October, BTC's resistance against China's influence increased as the digital currency's price stayed close to $60,000. And that was business news. Back to Bukola for the rest of our news.